if you're watching this, you are involved in the hair industry in some way, shape, or form. Whether you're a stylist, a salon owner, distributor, product rep, a friend, or a family, this documentary was made just for you. We wanted to create something special for the whole community to share. A message of unity and strength, and a beautiful reminder of why we love doing what we do and how important we really are. As hairstylists, we are service providers, chemists, sculptors, designers, painters, and artists. But we are also friends, confidants, therapists, shoulders to cry on, people to celebrate and share memories with. We are with you on your graduations, your weddings, in sickness and in health. We are the unicorns of the professional world. We get to form close personal relationships. We are the lucky ones who have human interaction and physical touch on a day-to-day -day basis. We can change someone's day or mood in only a matter of minutes. In this documentary, you will hear from a group of amazing humans who have shared their stories and their whys. Um, honestly, when I thought about my why of why I did this, it was because I needed to transform and utilize these different feelings that I had, these frustrations of the last year. Um, I really wanted to create something. I'm not going to be able to do this. <laughs> message for everybody to just kind of bring themselves to the present moment because I think that when we ask ourselves why do we do something it allows us to reflect and I think that when you ask yourself why it, it, it does allow you to, to come into the present moment and experience a feeling and when I thought about why I did hair and why I stayed in the industry for so long it was these feelings and these emotions of happiness and joy and being able to be there for people and make them feel beautiful and make them feel confident. And I think over the last year, we forgot or was made to forget um, how special we actually are, not only to ourselves, but to our guests. So I really wanted to create this message so that we can remember why we do what we do and how important we are and how essential we are. I really wanted to take these feelings of frustration and mold them into something positive that I can share with everybody and give other people a platform to share their story and their whys. I just thought that that was so important and I just really wanted to share it with everybody and with the industry and just remember that we are special and we are essential and people do care that we're out here making people feel beautiful and confident. So I hope that you guys like this documentary and this short film and I hope that it kind of invokes you to reflect on your own why and why you love doing what you do and why we do it and why we're so important. So I hope this, I hope you guys like it. <laughs> we have broken this short film into chapters so that you can hear our stories, journeys, and our whys. Hi, I'm Don Bradley. I'm Jamie C. Hi, my name is Richie Arash. I'm a hairstylist here in Toronto. It's KK here in Dublin, Ireland. My name is Lo Chabonneau. I'm the owner of Strange Bird Salon in Austin, Texas. I've been a hairstylist for 20 years. I have been doing hair for almost 10 years. My name is Lori Bell Nestor. I've been doing hair for almost 20 years. I've been doing hair for 14 years. My name is Kevin Murphy and I've been doing hair for 42 years now. I've been a hairstylist in this industry for just over 16 years. I've been a colorist for 37 years now. I've been doing hair for like 24 years now. In the industry for about seven years. I've been in the industry since November of 1994. I've been doing it for almost 19 years. This is my 23rd year. 
it's ever changing. We're creating all the change here and there. Like there's no one person that can say this is how you do it. I'm really nervous. I've never done something like this. I'm in the shadows mostly and that's where my comfort zone is. I'm better at making other people look good so they can shine. I loved being able to be behind a chair and you know make people feel beautiful and help them feel great about themselves. I not only get to do fun hair, but I get to connect with amazing people. I can't imagine ever not doing hair, to tell you the truth. You're giving everything to everybody all the time, but I honestly think that hairdressers are a rare breed. You got into this industry, you're touch, you're literally touching people, making them feel better about themselves. So if you don't think you're a, an emotional person and you're a hairdresser, you are, <laughs> you're in denial. We're creative, we're emotional, we connect to people. And I think that's why they say, if you're in this for more than five years plus, like you're in it for life. My heart, oh, I can feel it beating so fast because of how much love I have for something that I was born into. My father, you know, at 81 can cut circles around us and and would look can look at something like this and say, wow, look at what this generation is showing the world where I came from as an immigrant from Italy, you know, having a barbershop, a hair salon here in Toronto for 53 years. I hate that we talk about that, like that we're like hairdressers always like minimize themselves and they're just like, oh yeah, I just do hair. And it's like, don't say that. Don't say that. You don't just do hair. There's so much more to what we are. We're not stupid. I want us to stop talking about ourselves in such a negative way. It's incredible what we do, really, self-esteem wise and like no matter what age group too. I like I grew up being very creative and I would always draw, I would paint, like I would make crafts, I would do anything if it involved creativity. Like I loved it. When I started getting older and like realizing that you need a job <laughs> and you can't be a starving artist as my parents always said. At that point, like I didn't think art school would be attainable for me because my dad is actually an artist. He was an airbrush artist for a long time. He grew up very creative as well. That's where I get my creativity from because he's like, I totally get you. I understand where you're coming from, but he's like, a lot of these paths are very hard to make a steady income because people don't understand art. Yeah, literally from there, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a hairstylist. Kind of didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I was always kind of art artistic. I always wanted to create something. I was kind of, I was good at art. I was good at, like, I wanted to, um, I used to always like make things on my computer, like uh, graphic design, and I always kind of wanted to make music as well. So I kind of had all these interests that I kind of was like a mishmash of creativity. I knew I wanted to create something. I always knew I wanted to create something, but I didn't know what it was that I wanted to create. <laughs> so when I was leaving high school, I was offered a job at a hair salon, just like a part-time, like couple days a week to like sweep floors and you know make coffee and wash hairs and all that. So I was just kind of like an assistant to our hair salon. I remember seeing the clients and seeing the hairstylist create like all these colors and shapes and all these gorgeous heads of hair that was just, I was just mesmerized by it because you see all this hair on TV and you see all this hair walking down the street, but you never actually see the process that goes behind it. And I remember looking at it being like, this is crazy. Like how did these clients are leaving feeling on top of the world? And the hairstylists are all so passionate about what they do. And I was just in this like environment of like fun and creativity and loudness and music and it was just like so much fun and I knew straight away as soon as I started to work at the salon I was like this is this is what I want to do. I want to create I want to create hair. I, I grew up always wanting to be a hairstylist before doing friends hair. I was chopping the hair off Barbie dolls and then the Barbie dolls of the kids that I babysat so I didn't get to babysit for very long. <laughs> so I have a younger sister. She's um, she's eight years younger than me. Um, and when we were growing up, she was, she was my best, my best friend, my best friend. Um, and she always asked me to just like do her hair. It's like her and her friends would come over and they'd like play dress up. And I was like, 
the cool older sister. So they wanted me to hang out. I just, I kind of got into it that way. Um, I spent a whole summer teaching myself how to braid. Uh, we had terrible braids for, for a couple months and, and then went from there. I grew up, my upbringing was a little different. My mother married a bunch of times. I never met my father. And I spent a lot of my childhood in foster care or children's aid. And I, I, I was always a dreamer. My goal in those days was to be a rock star. I bought all the instruments I owned myself and I self-taught. I play the bagpipes, I play guitar, I sang in a rock band for years. When I really started to become aware of hairstyles and the effect that they have on people was in the 80s. And um, I was working in an office and a bunch of my buddies, six of my buddies and I had a booze can in downtown Toronto and it started to get really successful. So we had to expand. It was during the punk era, so I was making my friends mo I was coloring my friends mohawks to look like uh, slices of watermelon and zebra stripe and all kinds of crazy stuff. And before I knew it, I had a clientele. I was in the Bloor West area of Toronto, and I walked by a hair salon with a help wanted sign in the window. And there was all these beautiful women inside looking like they were having the time of their lives. And so I basically walked in, I grabbed the sign out of the window and I handed it to them. And six months later, I was running the color department at the Four Seasons Hotel. From as young as I can remember, I've always loved playing with hair. When I was younger, I would give them, you know, a couple of minutes to relax. Then I'd be like, can I play with your hair? <laughs> So I love, I've loved hair since I was maybe five, because I think I can remember when I was five. Even all through high school, I would, you know, do my friend's hair at school or, you know, I just envied hair. Like I just look at people's hair and um, I didn't necessarily think that I would actually make a career out of it. I just thought it was, you know, more of like a hobby, something that I just love to do. I think it was maybe one of my kids asked me when I knew and I couldn't pinpoint. Um, but when I knew, I was like dead set on that path. That's what I'm going to be doing. I was, I dropped out of high school at 16. Um, and I was just ready to not be in high school anymore. And I kind of had some ideas about hairstyling. I thought maybe I'd go into massage or maybe I'd go into skincare. And I was at home one day and saw that like the low, I was living in Nebraska. So the local beauty college was like doing their next enrollment date on my 17th birthday. And I was like, oh my God, it's a sign. And so I ended up enrolling and I was just like fell in love with it. I've just always loved like people's stories and fashion and Hollywood, everything like that since I was little. It's really hard growing up because my sister was like the smart one. So no one had like real like expectations out of me as far as like being successful and like here I am I'm like I've proven everyone wrong honestly from a young child I always knew that I wanted to be in hair doing hair of some sort um my mom always jokes and says like you know your barbies were always naked but their hair were done <laughs> I've actually worked at a hair salon since I was 15. Um, I grew up in a really small town so there was a salon school there and I worked at the salon but in my like off time I was able to go down and work down in the school and practice on mannequins and stuff like that so I knew that I loved it I knew that I loved the working environment and being around people and being able to connect um, I knew that that's what I wanted to do from such a young age. And I would like at home make my friend's hair orange. Would be like, oh my god, it's so cool. Like, you know, you go to Sally's, grab a package and give them, like, I used to give my friends like peekaboos, like really ugly orange peekaboos. But I thought it was so cool. Seven years ago, I was in like a really bad place. My parents were getting divorced and they were really pushy about me getting a job, a real job. They uh, pushed me into nursing school and although I'm like naturally empathetic, I hated it. And I was like, oh my God, this is awful. It's like, it's not fair for me. It's not fair for the patients, the families, the staff. I don't want to be a grumpy nurse. Mm -hmm. This is awful. I love helping people, but not like this. And I actually just walked by a hair school and within two days I was registered and within a week I started school and I loved it. The one thing that I came to terms with very early was that you never know it all and there is always someone better 
and you can learn from every every member of your team from sweeping floors to doing the most intricate updo or or color application so i i i think education and growth are the most important parts of bringing our industry forward i like i i still attend classes on a regular basis i've been doing this almost four decades and i still i feel like i've only scratched the surface there weren't very many cosmetology programs um Thunder Bay. So I only had, I think, two schools to choose from that were in my district that had cosmetology, but those two schools weren't where any of my friends were going. Mm -hmm. So at 13 years old, I chose to go to St. Pat's where they had cosmetology because I was like, no, I think I want to do this. Like, I don't care if I don't know anyone. I don't care if I have no friends. Like, I want to take this cosmetology class. I got my first job at a salon when I was like 16 and was a shampoo girl and I shampooed little old ladies. And I was like this weird goth girl working in this like very Christian uh, suburb. I thought I hated people until I started working in a salon. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's just like, I wasn't in the right place, you know? Um, and then I went to beauty school right out of high school and I've always loved it. It took me three jobs to actually move to Toronto. So hair school was not in my future. I knew that I was gonna have to find a good salon to do an apprenticeship with. As soon as I moved to Toronto, I started working in a salon about two weeks later and I worked there for nine years. I did my whole apprenticeship there. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of what to do and I learned a lot of what not to do there. Yeah, it was such a great learning experience. It was, you know, right on Young Street. It was the coolest thing when I moved to Toronto that I was working at a salon on Young Street. And then from there, um, I met my partner Sonia and that's when we, you know, opened Evolve Hair Studio. Even though when I, I did go to hair school that, you know, that first, it was, it was a one year program. When I was done hair school, I was like, oh, I got to go to university now because I still didn't think of it as, you know, a career. So I did four years of accounting in university and the whole time I was in university, I was, I was working in a hair salon. It was like my student job. Fast forward to today, it's, it is my job. <laughs> this hair industry honestly is probably the most passionate, dedicated, driven industry that I can think of. And not just because I'm a part of it, but because I grew up watching it. My father so proudly being the one to remove the tie and hang up the gentleman's shirt and when the service was over to make sure he didn't have hair in his ears or around the collar and then to put the shirt back on and then to put the tie back on and humbled not feeling as if he was a servant not feeling that he was below the level of the person that he was serving. As I can tell you as a little girl, I used to see some gentlemen in there every morning just to get their hair styled. Or the ones that would come and knock on our door at seven o'clock in the morning. And that was the true joy of seeing how my father has been needed, not just wanted. I am forever grateful for that day I called my father and said, I, you know, thank you for putting me through university, but I've decided I'm going to hairdressing school. And uh, I couldn't have been falling in love ever more so every day with, with a craft that I, I, I just couldn't. We call it a job because we get paid for doing it. <laughs> but it's our lifestyle. I'm not really sure at the time what what it was about going to cosmetology school that felt so right. But when I toured the school, I was just like, yeah, I think this is what I need to be doing. I'm going to really give it my all. I actually educated in the same salon that I, I worked for. They had their own academy. They had a couple of, of colleges in, in Dublin. And the training program was a pretty intense and pretty, like, you know, high standard training program. So I'm very grateful for the training that I got because I was able to work in the salon, but also get trained at the same time. But the training was like a four year program and we did everything like updos we did cuts color we did creative work we did social media we did so much like er everything was all in the course and 
honestly, when I started off, I was kind of like, I'm never going to be able to make it to the end of this because there was parts of it where I was like, I can't get a good weave in my highlights. I can't do a bouncy blow. I can't do waves. And I was so hard on myself. And I just felt that kind of criticism, that self-criticism kind of fade away as the years went on. And I could just see myself blossom into this actual hairstylist that I thought I would never be able to do any of these colors. And um, so the education that I got was super thorough and just, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity that I got to educate with the company that I could educate with. It was mm -hmm. great. Shout out to Peter Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it came across the hair industry completely by accident. I was waiting tables and I was about 19 years old and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I really wanted to go into the medical field, but I just didn't want to commit that much time to school. So a friend of mine had asked me if I wanted to go to hair school with her. And I remember asking my hairdresser at the time how he liked being a hairdresser. And he always looked like he was having fun. He was around pretty people. His hair always looked good and he was always in a good mood and i was like yeah he looks like he's having a great time so later on that year i decided to enroll into hair school and it changed my life i guess for me when it comes to our industry and why we do what we do is that growth that human connection and the problem solving that we get to do every day whether it's with someone's you know hair transformation the, their hair journey or just that human connection of recommending books that we've read that's helped with our life skills life changing all of that it just it's just something special about our industry that really lifts us all and i think you know with everything being closed down for so long in the last 12 months it has just really established how important our industry is and how important we all are and how important our guests are that come into us as well we are essential okay we are essential like mental health and feeling good about your appearance and the way you are not so much that we just make people look beautiful we make people feel good and not just appearance wise we reassure them we connect with them we make sure that they know they are valued and what they're going through is valid i love connecting with people and it's it's like a way i guess similar to like a bartender where you can it's like all walks of life every single person has hair or even if they don't have hair they have some some need for grooming um so there's every type of person. I've had some of the most incredible, I've met some of the most incredible people through doing hair. And whether that's people I worked with or people I've worked on, you know, I lived in LA for three years and I met, um, I had a client there that was from uh, Michigan, Detroit. And I ended up being her dog sitter. And I actually just did her hair a few weeks ago because she moved back to Detroit and she drove down to get her hair done by me. It's just a, a cool way to explore the world like you can go anywhere and do hair and um it's sort of like a, an old school like trade that we'll always need people will always need honestly when i was um when i first started off as a hairstylist i had this mindset where i thought that i had to please everyone and that every client had to be happy when they sat in my seat i quickly grew to learn that that's not always the case and i do find that as hairstylists our clients are kind of a reflection of who we are and what we like and you know our interests and I'm sure people that are watching this can think of their colleagues or even themselves and say oh yeah actually all of their clients talk like like their hairstylists they love all the same things that their hairstylists like they're kind of very similar people in that way whereas before I realized that I kind of wanted to just please everyone and I got really upset over when people would not like the hair that I did or didn't like the style of work that I did or even just liked me as a, as a person never mind the work that I was doing and I think once I broke free from that mindset of just constantly wanting to please everybody and just be the hairstylist for everybody it really made me realize that the connection that I have with my existing clients is just so much more special because now I've filtered out all of the people that you know probably aren't the same type of person as I am you know we're not really meant to you know gel well or whatever and it just kind of solidifies the connection that I have with the clients that I do have now because I know that these clients are you know truly people that want to see me and I want to see them and 
just the conversations that I have with my clients now, it's just so much more special because I'm like, you know, we're the same person, we like the same things. And, you know, some of my clients I would consider friends. You know, I'd see them on the street and I'd stop and I'd give them a hug. And like, I've had clients that have turned into friends and I've went out with them on night two and had concert nights with them and had drinks with them. And they sit in the chair and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, this is why this is what's been going on over the past two months and they tell me everything about their relationships about their kids about their marriage about their sex life about so many things they just they just open up as soon as they sit in the chair and it's not a connection that you get with a lot of other industries it's it's where they they, they sit down and all of a sudden it's like their safe space um i think that the reason that hairdressers are so special is because we make people feel good um, we are a safe place for people to go so that they feel heard and nurtured and cared for. And especially in this past year with the pandemic, oftentimes in my chair, I was the only person that my clients saw outside of their homes for an entire year. It's a huge amount of responsibility on us and responsibility that we are welcome to have because that's what we love to do is we love to care for our clients. The real meaning of success for me doesn't come from being able to support myself and make money in this industry. It's from those connections with my clients. And that's why I'm really honored to be a part of this industry and why I think our industry is so important. We connect with people in ways that most people never get to connect. We get to be that socialization, that cure for the loneliness and to make someone feel better about themselves. We're in we're in their lives and we create these relationships with them and we get to see some really great events in their lives, whether it's like rejoicing with them when they have a baby or, you know, graduation or getting married or listening while they're going through a divorce. And, and it really, um, I really, I had the hardest cut about a few weeks ago. I had these long time guests of mine and their son had taken their life. And I just realized, you know, we're also in their lives for that too. You know, it's not just la la la, I get to play with hair all day. You rejoice with your guests, but you also mourn with them too. For me, that hour that I'm there for a cut, or if it's a few more hours for a color, like that is a mental health break for me. It's relaxing and it's a break from the regular world. You know, I look at my phone a little bit, but often, I try to keep it in my bag and just talk to whoever's doing my hair or just like read a magazine or, um, you know, if your hair's in the sink, oh my God, that's just, that's my, I think that might be my favorite part because you can just close your eyes and someone else is washing your hair, or giving you a scalp massage. Like there's nothing better than that. So I always think of it as a mental health break when I'm there for sure. Well, I always, I'm just really excited to go to the salon. I like to schedule it on a weekday. So I leave work a little early. I enjoy a nice walk. And then it's honestly like a reunion because you get to know everyone in the salon. At least for me, like I like to get a lot of stuff done. So I'm there for two, three hours. I get to know the receptionist. I get to know my colorist. I get to know my stylist. And I always just look forward to having those chats. It, it doesn't feel like a stale, boring appointment. It's seeing my friends and doing something that's fun. And I always end up walking out of there feeling like a million bucks. So why wouldn't you be excited to go to the salon? The hair industry just makes me feel amazing. And it's not about the hair. It's about going in and connecting with someone and chit-chatting and catching up on their life and telling them about yours. It's, you know, it's meeting, it's meeting with a friend. It's a scheduled appointment. We do it throughout our lives, whether it's family, whether it's a, rel a distant relative, whether it's a close friend, or whether it's your stylist. You you put this time in and you get to know each other. They get to know my style. I get to know their skills. And it's this nice collaboration that you then get to walk around and show the world. Like I said, I've been doing this for 37 years. And when the first person that ever booked with me as a professional uh, for a highlight appointment still sits in my chair to this day. This woman's name is Avalon. And she sat in my chair and I went through the motions, how are you? How's everything with the family? And she said to me, my husband passed away. And so, you know, he was terminally ill. We, we all went to our, our vacation home in PEI because that's where he wanted his life to, to end. And we all held hands as a family and we, we watched his, the, his face change as his soul left his body. 
And I said to myself, what have I done to deserve this level of trust from someone um, when they're coming in and doing something as trivial as getting their highlights done? And, it made, and then I looked at my schedule and I realized that every name on that piece of paper was equally as important to me and they had shared equal, similar information with me over the years. And it made me realize that, you know, while some people look down on the, uh, the merit that our profession provides, it made me, it solidified the decision I made to make this my career for the rest of my life. And just the human connection for me is, you know, is what keeps me going. And it's so different every day. There's so many different people sitting in your chair every day. Um, I learn a lot from, and I'm servicing mostly women. So I learn a lot from the women that sit in my chair and I'm inspired by them. I've, you know, I've become less judgmental because of, you know, everyone's just coming from, you know, so many different things are happening in their lives and you get to find out about them, you know, when they talk about it in their chair. So it's just, uh, I don't know, it's very fulfilling for me with the pandemic. It's been hard to not have that thing that just like, fills your soul, you know, it gets you up in the morning and gets you going. So, you know, it's, it's been a little bit rough, but I absolutely love it. And it's been, I've been doing hair for like 24 years now. One of my favorite things about doing hair is literally the connection that I have with each and every one of my clients and employees. Um, it's something super special when you can meet somebody in the beginning of your career and be doing hair for 19 years and still have most of those clients, you know? You get to see them graduate, uh, meet their partners, get married, have children, um, you know, you do their weddings, you, you know, are there for their laughter and their tears. And I think it's such a special bond that we share with them. Every situation's different, every client's different. And it's really neat to, see yourself with like in your clients too right because often when you're going through something it's they're going through something or they're going something through something that's similar to what you're going through and yeah it, it's we have a very unique industry in the sense that it's you know you have to be able to draw that like professional line but you want to be able to have that human connection and that yeah that mutual respect for one another they know us and they feel safe in our in our chairs and they knew, they knew me and they knew that I was like doing everything to keep everyone's feeling safe and stuff so um that felt really good to be able to provide that for people like any sense of normalcy in this completely unnormal time every day I go to work it's something new and exciting even with the same clients, it's always something different. There's always a new conversation, a new palette, and, you know, their vision and my vision coming together is really, really rewarding. It's really awesome to see that in the end. And, you know, they get excited. I'm like, oh my God, that looks amazing. I'm so happy. I still get excited about it. It's not like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I know. I'm just like, okay, yeah, that worked. <laughs> You know, doing somebody's hair gives them an opportunity to see themselves differently, even if just for a moment, but like whenever anybody changes their color, changes their hairstyle, you know, like you give them an opportunity to like experience like a new version of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing that. And I love being a part of that. And I love having clients that I've had for over 20 years that I've seen their kids grow up and I did their kids hair when they got married. It's wild to me. Like, and I love that. I really love that. And there's so many, I have so many clients that have been with me for over 20 years. It's really really kind of crazy. I always call it the magical chair because it's incredible. Even a first time guest, you know, sit, get, sits in your chair and it's just like, blah, <laughs> you know, they get, they're just comfortable. They feel safe, which they should. That's how they should feel. They get to relax and they just get to purge everything and, and get up and feel new to carry on. And, and I think that's why we are in such an incredible industry. The importance put on mental health these days, that that's a huge part of it. Like we're a huge part of mental health. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. Everybody gets up in the morning and you're like, oh, I don't want to go to work today. And then I get there and I'm like, I forget this is what I do. And this is who I get to see all day. It really is like who you are and how you make them feel in that connection. From 
a young age, I knew that I was not a book person. It was not the way that I like to learn. I love working with my hands. If anybody knows me, like I am a craft freak. I love doing any types of crafts. Um, so I knew that I loved working with my hands and I knew that I loved making people feel beautiful. So it was such a great thing that I could merge my creativity with my compassion side and really build, you know, a life of just joy and happiness um, through being able to be creative. I didn't really know I was actually creative until I became a hairstylist because hairstylists are never really glorified, you know? It's like, oh, you're a hairdresser, but like hairdressers are just more than hairdressers. We're therapists, we're confidants, we're friends, we're artists, we're business owners, we're entrepreneurs, we're so many things wrapped into one bubble. And I think that being a hairstylist really gives me the opportunity to be my whole self every day and bring my whole self into my craft and my work and my salon and it's really given me the opportunity to grow as a human being not just as a hairstylist. I've always been more of an artistic person something that was kind of more my thing where instead of like never really like a books person so so very very hands-on very artsy very into that kind of stuff. I love everything about it I love the art of it you know the you know what I get to create I love the science because there's a lot of thought that goes especially because of you know I specialize in color I'm also an artist through and through so being able to paint and create is just another level of self-expression and joy and excitement in this human existence that I have I think it's so special that we can use our passion and use our hands and use our creative kind of outlet and use our art really because what we do is is art and sometimes I I hear from my clients when I'm like painting some balayage on their hair and I'm like you know taking teeny little waves of color or like teeny little waves of highlights and they look and they're like this is a really fine art that you guys do because here is fabric and we're painting on fabric and we're making this these shapes and these colors and these tones and these blends and the placement and just to be able to create that and do that with my hands but also then in turn make someone really happy and make someone feel really on top of the world about themselves. It's like, you, you can't compare it to anything else. Sometimes I can't wrap my head around how we can actually just create something and give someone something, just wear our hands and wear our minds and say, yeah, this tone is gonna look nice and this placement is gonna look nice or, you know, this kind of root belt or this balayage or these pieces are gonna look really pretty against your skin. And the fact that we have the power to make someone feel beautiful with just our hands and just our suggestions. It's like, it's crazy. Like, I love it. I'm obsessed. I have that passion. I love growing. I love learning new things. I, I'm the versatility of it all. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, um, I'm not over it, that's for sure. <laughs> I guess my final why would be it's um, it's the people, it's the stories, it's our ability to be in their lives, whether happy or sad, and the ability to make them feel good, no matter where their status is in life. Just being able to be creative, and this is this is an industry that you can grow in your craft if you allow yourself. And it, it just never, never, it never gets old if you don't let it, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's it, I don't know. <laughs> it's so awkward. The reason why I love it is because I've always been a give back type of person and I know how I felt leaving a salon every time I got my hair done when I was younger. I used to sit and watch all hairstylists kind of do things when I was getting my hair done and it just felt like, so worth it to me and I just was so fascinated with changing colors and all that stuff so I just felt like it was like my calling and finally like years later I'm in the spot that I am now and I couldn't be happier. Yeah I, I love it. I love every minute of it and I'll do it till I die. <laughs> I think I was just so shy when I was younger. I, I really didn't know who I was or who I was meant to be and I think that getting into the hair industry to, like definitely brought something else out in me. It gave me confidence, it gave me a voice and a platform to speak on. 
And you know, it, every day I think that I could have chosen to work behind a desk and I could have chosen a more stable job. I think that following your heart and following the thing that you're more, most passionate about, you'll never work a day in your life. So that is definitely why I became a hairstylist and why I stayed doing it. You know, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be an urban planner. I wanted to be a dentist at one point. Like, and all those things that I was so passionate about, this, this, this job. And I hope the rest of our industry, people who are in it, don't just see it for the dollar signs that come to them, but for those real connections that you make with another human. I mean, how lucky are we? We get to touch people for a living with our clothes on. <laughs> Being a hairdresser has taught me how to foster and nurture relationships and how to create loyalty and trust. These are things that I've learned just from being behind the chair and they are life lessons. And I think that being a hairstylist really gives me the opportunity to be my whole self every day and bring my whole self into my craft and my work and my salon. Why I'm a hairstylist is because I just love to create, but I feel like why I have stayed as a hairstylist for this long, I find that the connection that I have with my colleagues, the salon that I work in, it's not just creating hair for me. It's never been just creating hair. Like, I mean, I can create hair anywhere, but I find that what keeps me as a hairstylist and what keeps me, you know, loving what I do is the people I work with, the stories I get to hear, the stories I get to tell, the environment I get to be in, the competitions I get to, to see, the talent that I get to surround myself in. It's like you get to do what you love, but then you get to be surrounded by just all of these different elements of positivity and just greatness. Like, that's why I've stayed as a hairstylist. Like, my why is because I obviously love to do hair, but why I've stayed and why I will stay being a hairstylist is because I'm just surrounded by magic all the time. I always wanted to be a hairdresser, uh, mainly because I think my mum was a hairdresser, my cousin was also a hairdresser, so I really think it's in my blood to sort of be a hairdresser. I don't really have a client relationship anymore, but I still want people to have great hair. I think the idea of like, the idea of having a gift of transformation is a wonderful gift to have and a wonderful gift to pass on. So the idea of transforming someone and making them feel good about themselves, it never gets tired even after 42 years. If I would have chosen another profession, I certainly wouldn't have the passion for life or the, my um, affinity for art, my love for music. I, I think that is a very poetic way to, to touch people's lives. And I think it's a beautiful canvas to work on every day that doesn't get hung on a wall. It walks around and is shared with the world. And I think if we took that responsibility seriously, which we all do, I think, you, you really, as trivial and as, as corny as it sounds, we really do have the ability to help make the world a better place. And when you subconsciously make people feel more beautiful, the energy they emulate out into, the, into their lives might spill over to someone else. And, and, and I think people really dramatically underestimate the power of physics and quantum energy that, like the energy that separates us is also the energy that connects us. And that energy is out there. And if we all feel beautiful, especially in such a negative time, I think we can really uh, move forward and, and, and start healing this planet. We're not just the people that do your hair. We're listeners, we're healers, we're friends, companions, a safe place. And it's pretty incredible.